Hello everyone, this is Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus. So I switched out, I got a more reliable um, surge protector for my PC and some of my more delicate electronics. Um, a word of advice to anyone who is looking to get a surge protector, always look for the clamping voltage. If you have sensitive electronics, it should be ideally no more than 400, but if you can keep it at 330 or under 300 volts, that's that's excellent. So, um, also I recommend Belkin, the Belkin 12 outlet. That one is uh, 330 volts. Anyway, guys, uh, enough with the uh, with the with the uh, surge protector recommendations. Let's jump right back into the whole reason you're here. Let's get some more Devon, shall we? All right. <clears throat> there are no separate stalls. Just one row of shower heads extending from the wall. We take two adjacent showers. I press the button and water starts pouring onto me. Ah, it's cold. Next to me, Rune starts showering too, rubbing liquid soap into his thick pelt. Let's go, yeah, Rune. You're, you're Rune, you're gonna get your own. Don't worry, you'll be, you'll, you'll be a good boy. Uh, I've also decided the next playthrough I'm gonna be doing Miko, and then I'll do Rune. I don't want to stay long under the cold water, so I finish showering quickly and leave for the swimming pool. My fur, excuse me, my fur feels heavy with all the water it's soaked up under the shower, but I don't bother doing anything with it. I'm jumping into the pool in a moment anyway. I leave the showers, leaving a trail of wet paw steps behind me. The swimming pool looks fairly normal aside from maybe the lighting. Two rows of lamps hang from the ceiling above the water, reflected in the glossy tiles. The wall opposite to the entrance is made entirely of windows, giving a view of the surroundings. God, I really love the way that this looks. The music matches this very well, too. It's kind of, you know, eerie, kind of otherworldly looking. The pool is fairly small, as hotel pools usually are, but it seems long enough to build up some speed before swimming the whole length. As Rune said, Devon is already here, standing near the windows and looking at the mountains visible in the distance. He turns around and notices me approaching. Oh, I didn't think he would be this ripped. He certainly looked like the athletic type. He's a coach after all, but I didn't expect to see chiseled abs on him. Maybe he was a sports player like Rune too. He seems pretty young, actually. I wonder how old he could be. And why did he become a coach so soon? Most of the coaches I've seen were in their mid-30s to mid-40s. Hello, Devin. Carbon. Oh. I see that blush. Uh, you didn't forget anything, did you? You know you're... naked. Oh. Right. Even if Rune is Scandinavian, Devin isn't. I've heard that nudity is a much bigger deal in the U.S. than in Europe in general. Well, too late now. Ah, oh, sorry, Professor. I've lost the key to my room, as you know. All my stuff is locked back there, along with my swimwear. I forgot about that completely when I came here and started changing. It only hit me when I was already undressing. I met Rune in the locker room, and he told me that it wouldn't be a problem if I went skinny dipping. But maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Hey, it's not a big problem. It's not a big problem for me if it's not a problem for you. In the meantime, Room comes out of the showers and approaches us, too. Hey there, Devin. Hello. I thought you joined me earlier. What took you so long? I got sidetracked. I started doing other things and completely lost track of time. Sorry. Well, it's okay. Just don't slack off during this camp. I'll get back into the pool for a few more rounds. I'm going, too. I want to do as many laps as I can before dinner. They both jump into the pool at the deeper end and start swimming. It looks like Devin is slightly faster than Rune, but then again, Rune only did a few warm-up exercises in the locker room, while Devin was already here for a while. Having antlers is definitely a disadvantage, too. It's funny seeing Rune fully submerged with only his antlers sticking out of the water in front of him. Despite their setbacks, they finished the first two lengths almost at the same time. I head towards the ladder to join them, too. I lean against the wall, panting loudly. I haven't been to a swimming pool for so long that I forgot how tiring it is. Sadly, I was no match for the other two. For every length that I swam, they easily did two or more. And I still managed to completely tire myself out. My stamina really is garbage. Hey, how are you holding up? I look behind me and see the bulky Black Panther standing in front of me. Fine, I just uh, need a moment to catch my breath. But everything's fine. That's good. You got me worried a little bit. You looked like you were going to pass out. 
It's not that bad. I'm just a bit out of shape, that's all. It takes me a long moment to stabilize my breathing, but I finally stop panting and take a few deep breaths. If you attended my class more often, you'd be doing better, you know. Ah, so he noticed. That's one topic I hope we wouldn't bring up here. I know, it's just... Sports were never my forte. I have some bad memories regarding PE classes. Whenever I have to go to them, I get anxious and start feeling awful, so I usually have to stay in my room. Oh, I had no idea. I hope that I didn't cause any of those memories, and if I did, I'm sorry. I know I may not be the most approachable teacher ever. No, no, don't worry. I've just had my share of humiliations in middle, in middle school and high school, but I'd rather not remember it. You've been nothing but kind to me, actually. I'm sorry I've been missing your class, Devin. I promise I'll be better about that. That's good to hear. Well, not the part about humiliations, of course. I understand that very well. I can tell you in confidence that I disliked PE as a student, too. I only started to take it seriously when I went to college. And let's just say that I've had my fair share of humiliations, too. Oh, I never would have guessed. I wonder what he means by that. It's hard for me to imagine this ripped panther standing before me ever getting bullied. I suggest getting back to the changing room, though. I'm done swimming, and I'd feel much more comfortable having this discussion if you had some clothes on. I actually forgot about... I actually forgot I had everything hanging out, and I'm standing right in front of a teacher. Yeah, that must feel really uncomfortable for him. I look away, abashed. Sure, uh, I'm done too. I don't think I can swim even one more length. You two really have some serious stamina. It's just practice, that's all. Long hours of excruciating practice almost every day of the week for a few years. Hmm. Excruciating practice, you say? Almost every day of the week for a few years. Hmm. <laughs> you could get to that point too, even now. All you need is determination. Pick something you want to be good at, and stick with it. It's one of the best pieces of advice I can offer. We walk back to the showers together. Rune joins us as we leave the swimming pool. You, that was good. I really needed a good, tiring training like this. We three enter the showers and start washing all the chlorine-heavy water from our bodies. The water in the shower is no warmer now than it was before, but now it feels refreshing after all the swimming. I stand under a stream of water and my fatigue flows down with it, disappearing down the drain. We enter the changing room, all soaking wet, but invigorated. Rune and Devon open their lockers and take out the towels, and that's when, again, I realize that I forgot about something fairly important. Um... Yes? Devon looks at me with concern. No wonder, I must be looking pretty lost right about now. You know, I couldn't get my swimming shorts from my room. Right. Well, I couldn't get my towel either. I have a spare one with me in my bag. That is, if you feel okay with using it. It's clean and unused, don't worry. He passes me the towel. That's the second time today he let me borrow something of his. Thank you, Devin. I feel a warm, glowy feeling inside my chest. If this happened back in high school, instead of getting some actual help from anyone, I would have been made. I would be made fun of for weeks. I'm here, though, with others that care about me. I'm really happy. I dry myself with the towel I borrowed from Devon and put my clothes back on. By the time I'm done, Rune and Devon are still changing into their clothes, so I say bye to them and leave the locker room. The cafeteria is still half empty when the three of us enter. Maybe we're too early? I take out my phone and check the time. It's just a few minutes before, si before 1600, so the rest should arrive soon. Afternoon light fills the room with golden glow, giving it a more relaxed atmosphere, much different than the energetic mood that seemed to permeate the room during lunch. The voices in the cafeteria seem to be quieter, too. Maybe it's the peacefulness of this place slowly influencing everyone here. Lake is already sitting at our table together with Jorgen. Carvin! Hey there, where were you? I was looking for you, but couldn't find you anywhere. Hey there, Lake. I was just at the swimming pool. Well, what did you want? Really? We must have missed each other then. I wanted to go more to the sauna, but you weren't around. I ended up going with Torolf. He disappeared somewhere after that too, by the way. 
My thoughts go back to our last meeting, and I can feel my cheeks getting hotter. He disappeared so suddenly that I couldn't even ask him for his room number. And I wouldn't mind hanging out with him some more. I wonder where he is, actually. I don't think I've seen him around during lunch. But then I wasn't really looking for him. He probably was just sitting at another table. The three of us sit down around the table, the sound of chairs scratching against the wooden floor reverberating through the room. I look in the direction of the table beside ours, where Miko sat during lunch. He's sitting there again, leaning on his paw and looking somewhere outside the window with a gloomy look on his snout. Oh. And there's Travis sitting there, too, talking with Bjorn. I had no idea these two knew each other. I thought that Travis would want to sit next to Jorgen. I wonder what they're going to serve for dinner. That lunch was so good. I expect something like that in some trendy lunch bar downtown. Not here. Their table is just next to ours, and we're at the very end of the room, so it shouldn't bother anyone. Yes, even though the dishes were simple, the quality of everything was surprisingly high. The variety was also nice. I expected just one dish, or even simple sandwiches. Most of the staff left already, so this time we're likely to get reheated food. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Would you mind if we joined our table with that one? My friends are sitting there too. We're at the end of the cafeteria, so that shouldn't make a difference to anyone. I point in the direction of the other table, looking around at everyone looking around at everyone at ours. Hmm. I see no problem with that. However, you should go and ask the other table if they don't mind it either. Sure thing. So nobody here has anything against it. No worry. Go ahead and ask. Okay, that's great. I was sure there would be there I was sure there'd be more persuading involved. I stand up from the table and walk to the other one, where Miko is sitting, and tap him gently on the shoulder. He turns around, clearly surprised to see me. His ears perk up, and a cheerful smile appears on his snout. Carvin! What are you doing here? Would you mind it if we joined the tables? This way we could all sit together. I wouldn't mind it at all. Quite the contrary, I would really like it. Is that okay, Bjorn? I don't want to speak for everyone here. Oh, why would I? That would be cool, actually. I nod. Wow, this really was very easy. I return to my table and wave at Devin, trying to get his attention. I see no problem with it either, so we can go ahead. Devin simply nods in response and stands up. I feel a sneeze coming on. One second. One second. Okay, I guess not. <clears throat> okay, everyone, help me move the table. Sure thing, coach. We all stand up, lift the table, and join it with the other one. Hello there, hope you don't mind us joining. Of course not, the more the merrier. We were just talking about the facilities here. Ain't, were any of you in the swimming pool or sauna here yet? Yeah, we visited the pool with Devin. It's fine, not very big, but enough to get some speed. Oh, and there's quite a view from there. By the way, I believe that I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Bjorn. I'm studying neurology. Oh, good idea. How about we all introduce ourselves? I don't know most of you yet. I'm Rune, currently in the fourth year of studies, neuroscience. Apart from that, I also play basketball and have a few other hobbies I try to cultivate whenever I have the time. I'm Travis, studying neuroscience, but I'm in my first year. I moved to Norway from the U.S., and I'm half American and half Japanese. I like anime and JRPG games, Korean cuisine, and some good tea from time to time. Nothing better than a good cup of green tea. True, Japanese sencha is my reason to live. I'm more of a fan of matcha. I always start my day with one, but I wouldn't say no to sencha. Um, Miko and I study marine biology with a specialization in cetaceans. Wait. Oh, I'm Miko. <laughs> That's stupid. I'm a freshman and I moved here from Finland, just like Carvin here. I make music in my free time, and I like anime, too. Oh, yes. I believe we most certainly know each other already. I'm Carvin, and as Miko just said, I moved here from Finland. I study cognitive science, and in my free time I dabble in photography, both digital and analog. So, I'm Lake, and like Miko and Carvin, I moved here from Finland. I'm a freshman, too. I only I study astrophysics. I'm happy to meet you all. I'm Jorgen, in the second year of astrophysics studies. 
I like the literature, and I don't like noise. Everyone is looking at Devin expectantly. Only after a moment he understands that we're waiting for him to introduce himself, too. That's what he gets for sitting with students, I guess. Um, so, I'm Devin, I believe you all know me. I'm a coach at our university, and technically I'm here to supervise you. I moved here from the U.S. less than a year ago, so I'm still just acclimating here. He's suddenly interrupted by the lady from the, from the reception who came with our dinner. She greets us and starts putting plates of food down on the table. First there's some soup, pea-colored and creamy, smelling of margarine and thyme. Then a few dishes filled with various stuff, mashed potatoes, sprinkled with dill, whole baked carrots and veggie balls, and a jug of sauce. And finally she puts down two platters full of pancaker. Thin Norwegian pancakes, topped with some dark blue jam and various fruits. Oh, that would be the alarm! Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dawn Chorus Devon's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!